Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Theodore Campbell once again, and I got another video for you guys. Uh, like I say in the beginning of a lot of my videos, there's uh, I got a special spot for a place in my heart for a lot of my buses and uh, stuff that I collect, but there's certain ones in my collection that really, really resonate with me and I really hold close to my heart. And it's not even that they're all that detail or they're the best in my fleet, it's just that uh, there's some level of significance to the actual bus or the company that I'm collecting. So, just like I showed you the green Renaissance uh, uh, bus that I showed you in one of my other videos, that was a close one, the Mr. Bills one. And this one right here is another one. This bus is modeled after a company way back in the day called Rolling Thunder Tours. I mean, this company probably has been out of business probably more than 20 years already. Again, this was another company, like I said in a lot of my videos, I'm a second generation bus driver. My dad was a bus driver. He drove for over 30, 40 years. He worked for many different companies and Rolling Thunder Tours was one of them. Now, from my remembrance, now you got to remember, I was a really, really, really young child, but from what I remember, Rolling Thunder Tours fleet was pretty much all pre rolls as far as the charter buses. Now, they actually own school buses as well. They was actually a school bus company, I believe, but they just had charter buses as well. And if I remember right, pretty much their whole coach division was all pre rolls Now, most of the, their pre rolls were the Lee Mirages. But I believe they had two buses that were unique, and they was actually called Marathons. Now, that's not to be mistaken with Marathon Coach. Marathon Coach is a company that builds different um, entertainer buses and stuff like that, and they're still in business to this day. But there was actually a model, Prevost model, that was called the Marathon. It didn't last very long. Um, it would, you can almost say that it was Prevost's answer to the MCI-9. It had very, 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 very similar characteristics to the MCI-9. Uh, if you can pretty much um, take the bottom half of this bus and pretty much get a Lee Mirage Prevost and put the top of an MC-9, that was pretty much what a marathon was. Most people know the Mirages, Lee Mirages had those sloping windows on the side that curved up. Well, the Marathon didn't. It was pretty much just flat windows, almost like an MCI-9. And it didn't have the, the square windows in the front of the bus uh, like a Lee Mirage. So I'm trying to give you guys a little history lesson real quick. Because a lot of people are not privy of the Prevost Marathon. So it's a very, very rare bus. If you can see one, I see them pop up in some bus groups where people post pictures of it, but it's a very rare bus. Uh, Prevost made it for a little time, but I don't think it was as popular as the Lee Mirage. So they pretty much discontinued the marathon and just continued with the Lee Mirage. And of course we know the H345 came much later, but those were the two buses at the time. They were pretty much but brother and sister buses and you pretty much had to choose which one you want and i think most people chose the lee mirage because it had a more unique look from the mc9 and plus customers like the sloping windows where it kind of curved over to the roof so you would be able to look upwards you know when you're doing tours and you can say you're in new york city you know you're able to look up at the buildings because the windows sloped over uh the sides hope i'm not talking too fast i'm trying to get the information out there so just trying to give you a little background on the Prevost Marathon if you've never seen one. Now this bus is modeled after the Prevost Marathon. Now the people who actually made this bus is actually called Danbury Mint. Uh, they made a whole bunch of different die cast models and uh, replicas and collectibles. But they came out on, with a line where... Um, it was pretty much collectibles where they had different teams and different stuff like that, like baseball teams, basketball teams, like sports 
memorabilia. And they made a bus to model after a team bus, but it looked very similar to a Prevost. So I took it and ran with it. I said, I'm going to grab one of these Danbury Mint buses and I'm going to make it a coach. Now, anybody who pretty much a model or a, or a custom painter will tell you, sometimes you got to be creative. This bus probably would look closer to a Lee Mirage, but I had to be creative. I painted the top with that so they can, the windows would be closed in like a nine so they could look like a marathon. Now I actually have had, or should I say had, cause I don't have them anymore. I had th two more of these where I, I continued the window line all the way to the top so it can look like a Lee Mirage, but I actually let those go. But I kept this one because of the company, not per se of the bus. So I'm just trying to give you some history. The real um, Marathon had a sloping roof that came downward, almost like the MC9. So you kind of got to use your imagination when you make these things. Because a lot of times you modelers may know there's things out there that we want and we just cannot get. But if you can find something close to it, you can try to make it as close as you can. So let me say this up front. This is one of the first models I ever painted. So please excuse the paint job. I admit the lines are horrible. <laughs> uh, I literally painted all this stuff by hand. I didn't even use painter's tape. So if, as you see the stripes, they're crooked. They're not painted correctly. So Hopefully you guys will not critique this model too bad. Maybe you can just remember the past the same way I do. But this bus is not painted to be perfect. It, I painted this years ago. So hopefully you guys can give me a pass. I use some random sticky uh, lettering that you can get from Staples that were individually uh, packaged. So I individually put every letter there. That's why uh, the name might be a little wavy. It's not perfectly straight. But again, what I was trying to portray this with this bus, I just wanted to create something that didn't exist. And at the time I worked with what I had at that time. Um, there was many times I thought about repainting this bus over or getting another Danbury Mint um bus and redoing it so they can look a little bit more professional because i think my skills got a little bit better but sometimes when you're a, a modeler or you're a collector sometimes you just keep things for the nostalgic of things this bus really means something to me because like i said my dad worked for this company and even though it's not perfect it still is special to me and it kind of shows where i came from as far as my modeling so I'm just saying this so that you can understand that um, this bus, I, I know you people are like, well, he didn't even show us the rest of it. But as you see, the lines are not straight. This is supposed to be, again, a Prevost Marathon. Um, unfortunately, see the back is really choppy. <laughs> the back is really bad. I should redo this bus, to be honest with you. I really should. But, it's good enough for me right now. And if you was to type in Pre Prevost Marathon on Google, unfortunately, you'll probably get a whole bunch of the entertainer buses. And uh, again, like I said, the Prevost Marathon was a very rare coach. So you might find a picture of one. I actually have a picture of this actual coach on the thumbnail so that you can see how this bus company in the library looked in real life. And you'll see the actual Prevost Marathon in the picture. Now, a little bit of history, because again, I was a child on Rolling Thunder Tours. Again, like I said, there was a um, school bus company. They had a few coaches. They were located in New Jersey. I don't remember exactly where or what town it was, but it was in New Jersey. Now, for you bus historians, you might say, well, I recognize this paint job, but I don't remember Rolling Thunder Tours. Well, when Rolling Thunder Tours went out of business, another company took over their buses called Amarez Tours. 
Now, Amores Tours, I don't think they took over the marathons, but they took over the Lee Mirages. And their garage was actually in Weehawken, New Jersey, right under the viaduct going towards the Lincoln Tunnel. So just giving you some history. So if you don't remember, if you recognize this paint job, but you don't remember Rolling Thunder, there was a company called Amores Tours that took them over. And believe it or not, before, I mean, after Amores Tours went out of business, Premier actually bought a couple of their Lee Mirages with the same paint job. So maybe you saw this paint job with Premier out of the Bronx. So just trying to give you some history. Now on the actual bus itself, like I said, Dan Danbury Mint, they modeled this bus off of a Prevost. Like you can look at it all day and tell that they copied off a of Prevost trying to make this. But again, the cool thing about these buses, maybe this could help you to maybe buy one for yourself. It actually has opening doors. As you see, the step is there. The luggage apartment door is actually open. Let me see if I can get it to work for you guys today. And they actually open properly, like all the way up, like a real coach. All three open up. So that's another cool thing about these Danbury Mint buses. Uh, if you buy one and you just keep them the way it is, because most of them have like baseball teams and basketball teams and stuff like that. They're cool even if you keep them stocked. But the cool thing is that, like I said, the luggage compartment door is open. This bus is real old, so it's probably, and it got a lot of old paint on it. So sometimes it's a task trying to get these things open. There you go. So as you see, the luggage bay is open just like a, a, a real bus. The passenger door opens. And yeah, you can see paint chipping. Like, this bus is really old. I had this bus for years. So not only is it a paint bad paint job, but the paint is chipping because I done had this bus for years. But I still consider this one of my favorites out of all of the buses that I collect. One, because it's a cool bus all together, and because of the bus company. Like I said, it's a company my dad worked for. The doors actually open on this side as well. I won't open all of them. Let me just open one just so you can see. All three of these open. So it's a cool bus. If you want one of these, uh, there's plenty on eBay. Go on eBay, look up Danbury Mint and look up the different teams and stuff. And they have them pretty much a whole bunch of them, various different prices. I can't give you a price because I've literally paid different prices because I I think I've owned five of them all together. And if you was wondering what size this bus is as far as scale, they're roughly about 143 scale. I don't have an HO bus with me, so you can compare. Uh, actually, I can. Just hold on one second. So if you want to know what... A 187 scale bus would look next to a 143 scale. That's that's pretty much it right there. Big difference. <laughs> it's not a big difference like the 132 bus that I showed you with the Mr. Bills, but it is a big difference. Big difference. Big difference. So, hope you guys like this video. Like I said, this bus is a special bus to me, especially because of the name and the company. Hope you guys take a look at that thumbnail where you can see the actual real bus in real life. And uh, let me know what you think. Maybe you bus historians can see this. You can give me some background on it. Because like I said, this was before I was a bus driver. I was actually a kid when these buses were going down the road. I just rode on them, rode on them as a kid with my dad. So let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe, and let me know what you did. Get in the comments. Talk to you later.